Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today, I want to have a bit of a discussion about the steel wheel apostate. Now, this won't, I'm, I'm going to try to follow sort of the format that I usually use for reviews, but it won't be exactly a review so much as it will be a discussion of why this knife has impressed me a lot the last, uh, you know, I've had it for six months or a year, and it's been pretty enjoyable in that time, but also it's been quite a surprise. There are a number of times where I've thought, man, this this works way better than I I kind of expected it to do. Uh, this holds up better than, than I expected. And so I want to kind of work through some of that stuff. And I will cover the, 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 the main points that I normally hit in a review, like the size and weight and blade and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, but from a slightly different perspective. So the, the main thing here is I've used this alongside some pretty well done and, and well respected knives that sort of everyone thinks of as really, really good. Uh, I've I've used this in a lot of situations where I feel like it it was well suited well and, and and some other knives that perhaps I like better or or get more joy out of I I didn't want to use them so I want to go ahead and get into this and talk about some of that stuff and why that all is. Uh, beginning with one point though that I have to put out there, uh, I'm not in love with this particular color scheme. They they come in a few different colors. Um, and Steel Will, if anyone from Steel Will is watching this, I would love to see this in maybe like blue or orange with a satin blade. Uh, I just feel like this particular green and black color scheme is not the one that I would pick if I was going to be uh, buying one of these. Now, maybe some of you watching really, really like that color scheme, and so that's fine. Uh, that's that's a pretty subjective thing, and it doesn't really impact performance all that much. So first off, uh, size, weight, and carry. This is eight and a half inches overall, three and five eighths inches on the blade, five inches when closed, and almost four inches of grip area. So like three and seven eighths inches of grip area. Weighs in at five ounces, well, 4.8 ounces. So for me, that's a pretty nice carry size. And you think of the knives that I really, really like to carry, you know, I think of stuff like the Recon 1 that's, you know, a little bigger, but around that five ounce point, um, the steel, uh, the cold steel, um, wow, Spyderco Amalgam, uh, the Zero Tolerance 0308, the... Uh, Oh, another, you know, another favorite zero tolerance that's visiting right now is the 0640, uh, the 0920, you know, all of these knives, uh, the um, Chavez Liberation, the recently reviewed Lion Steel Mito, you know, all of these knives kind of fall into a similar size and weight spectrum, you know, somewhere close to eight inches or above. Now I know the Mito is a little small, uh, but around eight inches or a little bit above between four and five ounces. You know, if a, if a knife gets a lot lighter than that, I, you know, I, I just, I like something a little more substantial. Um, and, and, so this knife definitely fits the bill for being a fairly confidence inspiring knife. It carries well enough um, and gives quite a bit of, of blade and quite a bit of utility in a reasonable size. Now the blade, let's talk about the blade. It is S35VN, which is not my favorite blade steel, but it's definitely great steel, right? I, I would never complain about a knife in S35 VN. We've got a bit of a clip point here. So let's, let's talk about this grind. So the finish, I'm not in love with the finish. We've already established that, but there are a couple things here that I think are worth noting. So they've done this sort of top swedge on this sort of double clip. Like you can see that it changes angles here. And then again, here, what this blade does pretty well is you know it's got a fine enough point that you can do some pretty fine detailed stuff with it and it works fine but it also carries a lot of material they've done a really nice job balancing you know a tip that's fine and can can open clamshell packages and stuff like that could of course pierce if you ever needed that uh, but it can also but it's, it's not going to break it's not a knife that i'm afraid to use it's not even a knife that i'm afraid to do you know some light gentle prying with although again i never i never do any kind of serious heavy prying with a knife it's just not meant for that but you know let's say prying frozen burgers apart to to uh put them on the barbecue I, I wouldn't mind doing something like that with this knife. And there are some knives where I wouldn't even do that because they're just so, so thin and so fine. The other thing, though, is this is a pretty thick blade stock. 
And yet over and over and over again, I'll see if I can grab a piece of cardboard from somewhere. But every time I go to cut something with this, whether I'm cutting an apple for the kids, whether I'm cutting cardboard like this as I demonstrate this for you, um, I just cannot get over how easily this moves through material. It, it, it's ground. It, it looks like on first blush, and if you're just watching this on video, you'd go, yeah, this is pretty thick. It's probably not going to be much of a slicer. And I thought that too. But a couple of things, it's pretty thin behind the edge, number one. But number two, the, the flat grind, I mean, it it just works really, really well here. And over and over again, I'm pretty impressed that a knife with this grind, notice it's not a super high flat grind. It's pretty thick blade stock. So I look at this and go, yeah, there's no way this is going to slice well. And it does. It works really, really well. And a lot of that has to do with uh, it being very thin behind the edge, which is quite nice. And something that I think is a, a lesson that can be learned by other knives as they're doing their blade grind. Um, and you kind of think about what if you had kind of followed this line right up to here and done sort of a saber grind on this, you know, kind of a bench made 940 looking thing. Um, it, it might slice even better. Uh, or if you'd gone with a flat grind all the way to the top again. Um, so the blade again, performs extremely well. And this S35VN has held up really well. So I don't know, you know, I've never really had a bad experience with S35VN, but they seem to have done a pretty nice job with the heat treat here. Uh, now, moving on to action. And here's, here's where this thing starts to combine some different things. So, so far, it's all been focused on utility. However, you know, titanium frame lock, you know, that's a, a little higher end. It's something that you're not usually going to buy unless you're into, you know, nice knives um, and with that titanium with a high-end titanium frame lock we expect a certain action we expect a certain level of performance and this has it it's really really smooth you know drops shut just nicely the detent is ex just dialed in so well so this is a snappy fidget friendly knife um, that still inspires a lot of confidence. And, and a lot of times I think we kind of go, okay, you get to have one or the other. You can get a, a knife with great action that's really snappy, that's really enjoyable, or you can go with you know, a utility cutting tool, uh, but the action's not gonna be that great. And this really does combine both. Now it is on washers and that has caused uh, even myself to say, you know, I, I don't like harder use knives on washers, but I've done all kinds of things with this and I've never had a problem with it. So they've got a really nicely dialed in action here. They've got a lock bar that's super accessible. There's a little bit of jimping there. So it really easily uh, grabs your thumb. The other thing that is unique about this is the blade stops. Usually when blade stops are external and they're, they're in the place of thumb studs, you know, they don't always work that well. And I'm working left-handed here. So um, I'm having a bit of a tough time. But these these blade stops work really, really well as thumb studs. They're just as enjoyable. And this is something, this is like really rare. You don't see a lot of knives where um, the thumb stud deployment works as well, equally well to the, the flipper tab. And in this case, both work really, really nicely. They're fast, they're smooth. I mean, it's just all that you would want. Uh, so then, so we get, again, a high-end knife. It's designed to be sort of a tactical hard-use knife, and it delivers that stuff while still being refined and, and uh, still being enjoyable to flip and use and, and providing quite a high level of satisfaction in terms of quality. So we've got G G10 titanium uh, combination here. Uh, I'll let you take a look inside. You can see that they have relieved the G10 uh, for weight as well as, sorry, I'm not, there you go. So you can see the milling now on the titanium and let's flip it this way since that other way worked so well. And yeah, now it's not going to work for me, but uh, <laughs> you have to take my word that it's nicely weight relieved on both sides and yet really, really tough and confident inspiring. One full backspacer here, so I don't get any movement at all. Uh, it's quite hand filling and and the jimping here on the thumb ramp is nice. When I grip this knife, I was thinking, you know, I really got to get some hard work done with this in a really hard hammer grip or a, a, or a saber grip where I've backed off a little bit. Um, this is very, very good. Very, again, confidence inspiring. It's a knife that I feel like I can get a lot of work done with. And, and really, 
for for utility, the handle ergonomics and the blade grind matter the most, right? If I'm going to have to cut a bunch of stuff, it needs to be comfortable in hand and it needs to cut well. And again, this does both really, really well. Um, there's not a whole lot I would change. The only thing I would possibly think about doing differently is this whole area right here just looks a little odd to me. And if I really push up with my index finger, which I don't know why I would, but if I purposely go out of my way to kind of push on this, it can create a bit of a hot spot. In a normal grip like this, it's not a hot spot, but it, I can't imagine how, you know, somebody, if you're kind of really moving around in here and really pushing back and forth, it could become a little bit of a hot spot. Um, you know, I've, as I say, I've used this quite a bit. I put a lot of, uh, of wear on it. I've had it in my hand a lot and I haven't noticed an issue, but I, I'm just theoretically saying that it could potentially happen. Um, so that's, that's really the only complaint I have about this whole knife is this one potential hotspot right here. Uh, and again, otherwise it's great. It's comfortable. It's grippy. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I guess I can point out once again, I'm not in love with this particular color scheme. I, I'd like to see some more color options available. I don't know if Steel Will is still making these, but I kind of hope that they are. Um, and, and so now let's go ahead and pull in some knives that I think it compares to fairly well. Uh, the Lion Steel Mito has a few other little um, accoutrements, I guess, a few little upgrades. Uh, but this knife, you know, for the especially for the money, uh, man, you're paying a lot of extra to get M390 steel, which is nice, and to get a removable flipper tab, which, you know, frankly, does adds very little to the knife for most people unless there's some kind of legal requirement happening there. And the Mito is a great design, beautiful knife. I, I really, really like it. But this is quite a bit less and delivers just about the same thing. Um, let's see, similar price knife. I think these are probably 170 or so. Um, the... The detent, the action is much better on the steel will than this. I like this design a little bit better, and I like the ergonomics just a little bit better. But uh, there's another good comparison. Uh, let's see, zero tolerance. I think there's a lot of zero tolerances we could put beside this because you know the zero tolerance thing is kind of like you know titanium frame lock with G10 on this side, and and we've got titanium frame lock with G10. They have lightened this up a bit by not having the stainless steel liner on the G10 side, which I think is great because G10 is pretty darn tough material. Uh, I don't think you would. Uh, you know, in terms of performance, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Um, here's another great ZT where, and it's, it's similar, I, I think a similar approach is taken here. It's pretty well balanced. It can do an awful lot, but it kind of leans to the more robust grind uh, compared to this guy where it's a little thinner behind the edge. So again, performance wise, the, the steel will does a little bit better, even than some really, really nice zero tolerance knives. I have done a full comparison between this and the Recon 1. Uh, this obviously the Recon 1 here is quite a bit bigger, which may be something you want. But if you look at the cutting edge comparison, very, very similar. So you're you're getting, you know, very close performance to a Recon 1, of course, without the triad lock. Um, if you prefer, you know, this obviously is going to be a titanium frame lock with really nice action. So if action is something you're looking for, that's a significant feature here. Um, one other knife I want to bring in, and that is the Para 2. So where where I think this stands out, you know, the Para 2 is a great knife. I love it. It's definitely, this knife is much more confidence inspiring. And these are very close in price. You know, if I was going to buy, if I was looking side by side at one of these thinking, you know, I want one knife that I can just put in my pocket and trust it for every single possible eventuality, this would be an easy pick over a Para 2. Now the Para 2, the ergonomics are a little bit better. It's lighter, um, but it, it, and so perhaps if it's strictly EDC I'm looking for, uh, and not so much EDC plus that might push me toward the Para 2. Uh, uh, the action of course on the Para 2 is quite enjoyable as well. So those are some alternative considerations that I could throw out there. And there are, you know, we've got a titanium frame lock with the G10 show side. Like how many of those exist? There's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But my argument here is that this one, because of some, some nuance here, uh, one, this, I forgot. Now let's, 
let's point out a couple of things that have sort of gone by the wayside lately. The external stop pins are very strong, very confidence inspiring. That is fantastic. And, and you can feel that, you know, when, when you are doing some harder cutting tasks, sometimes you'll see a frame lock slip over because you've put so much pressure. The frame lock does not move on this knife. It's really, really secure. Um, and so they've done a really nice job, I think, delivering a heavy duty, capable folder in a package that doesn't weigh too much, doesn't cost a crazy amount, and that looks pretty good as well. You know, just to me, not in this particular color scheme. So I think this knife deserves a lot more attention than it gets. And I know it's a few years old, but even back when it first came out, it didn't get a lot of love. And, and, line, and Steel Will, I don't think, pushed it very much. They were, they were really making hay with some of their budget models when this first came out. Uh, and I get that, you know, you don't want to confuse the marketplace or whatever. But they've done something really, really cool here, and I think it deserves a little more love than it gets. There you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want one of these, use my discount code. Go over to White Mountain Knives. Uh, and actually, even though this has been around for a while, Justin did have some in stock the other day when I was looking on the website. So hopefully that's still the case. Again, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.